Welcome everyone. It's Ryan here of Ryan Edda Photography and welcome to another episode of Small Business Shoutouts where I'm joined by the awesome Jim of Saget's Formal Wear. How are you? I'm doing well, Ryan. Thank you so much for having me. This is exciting. Yeah, thank you so much for coming in on this interview. So a little, a little bit of intro for you guys. Um, Jim is the owner of Saget's Formal Wear, which is based in Upper Darby, and you have another location in Phoenixville. Phoenixville, Phoenixville, and there they customize suits for men for weddings, uh, proms, and right special occasions. Special occasions, and we're awesome. even doing custom made for ladies now as well. Yeah. So before we get started, guys. I need you to, to smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, and share the video if you find this video entertaining and educational. <laughs> so we're going to try it to be. So a little bit of intro of Jim. So Jim is the owner of Saget's Formal Wear, and Jim Richak Jen is a custom tailor and men's formal wear specialist in the Philadelphia and Tri-State area. With over 32 years of experience, two locations, Drexel Hill and Phoenixville, James has had the honor of dressing over 4,000 grooms and their wedding parties. James is dedicated to changing the way men dress for their weddings through his custom-made suits, tuxedo, and shirt program. He's currently working with clients on their wedding day and with his day of dressing services. James has been recognized as the top formal wear company by Wedding Wire Couple Choice Awards for the last seven years and had the honor of making two custom suits for two Super Bowl champions, Jason and Travis Kelsey, our Eagles. When not involved in fashion, he enjoys family time, the outdoors, and going to college football games. All right, that was that was an awesome intro for you, Jim. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. It's the tailgating part of the football games, but <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I miss football already. I, I'm I'm really <laughs> hopeful. You know, things resume by by before football season. Well, I think we'll be okay. We just have to practice a little social distancing and get this disease out of here, right? Did, did you follow the draft? I think it was the other day or. Last. Not really. You know, I'm just waiting for all the uh -huh. stuff to blow over and then I'll get into the football season. I'm really concentrating on my business and finding other ways of communicating with my clients and whatnot. But, um, and this whole Zoom idea is amazing. I've worked <laughs> already with several clients. So. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Could you tell, so in, in in with that on that note could you tell us a little bit more how are you doing how's how's your business pivoting and adopting to you know the sure. so when when my last day of work was march 14th which was a saturday and we had a full book of business it was just a normal day uh, knowing that we had some you know social distancing with the uh, the the wipes and cleaning all the surfaces and I was getting a little nervous and listening to the news. And then I made a decision to close both of our stores at the end of that business day before the government mandated it for non-essential businesses. So right away, uh, as soon as I got home working from my home office, I got extremely busy with uh, my web uh, people on finding a new way of communicating, working out, uh, online virtual appointments, made some changes to my website, and did a lot more social media marketing through, you know, the MailChimp and Constant Contact, things like that, to allow me to reach all the leads that I've accumulated over the past year of my um, marketing program, which we do a lot of bridal shows, the uh, fourth quarter and first quarter of 2020. So I took all those leads and said, this is the best time to go market those leads and let them know we're there for them. And we can do it virtually 
on my online platform so they're not getting nervous of how can they not see formal wear. So um, I sharpen my pencil, put a lot of time into uh, changing the way we do things and so far it's been very successful. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a good, good business principle to keep innovating, you know, and, and keep up with the times. We can't get, you know, get left behind <laughs> or else, you know, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be really difficult. Sure. And, and I understand I'm listening to my clients. We're dealing with a very uh, educated young clientele. And um, I think this is just the, the new way of doing business. They're going to enjoy the technology where they don't literally always have to go to a brick and mortar um, for the initial visit. I would love to do Zoom calls in, mm. you know, for future clients and then eventually meet them. Uh, in person, but at least at any given time, whether it's early evening schedule uh, and after business hour Zoom call. Um, yeah, it, it's such an amazing thing that we have the resources to still make this happen. You know, technologies like this available to us for for to utilize. You know, and and keep things moving. <laughs> That's right. That's so true. So true. Yeah. So. I, I wanted to get a good um, intro so about your company. So how did, how did you, let's start kind of from the beginning. So how did you come up with a company name? What was your idea? What inspired you to, you know, create the business? Sure. So Ryan, it all started, I'd say in the, I was born in 58, so as a child between the 60s, 70s, and 80s, I watched my mother and father work uh, very hard at their trade, which my mother and father uh, were, um, my mother was a seamstress, my father was a tailor. Uh, they together owned a dry cleaning and tailoring business. And I just watched, and my father's 94 years old, young, Wow, still with me today, uh, thank God, um, lives with us, and still sews. And we watch over him with a hawk, like a hawk, especially with the COVID-19 and making sure, you know, you take care of the elderly. Um, he is very, um, uh, he was a World War II veteran, uh, so when he came out of uh, World War II, he went right into the, the dry cleaning and tailoring business. He actually was the tailor on board the ship, the USS Phoenix. So, you know, they all had uniforms that needed to be sewn, and who, who was going to do it? it yeah, was that was, that's really cool. So growing up, watching them work, and with their work ethic, I was born and raised in the dry cleaning industry. Of course, I went to high school, and I went through my my, my teen years and exercised other job opportunities and did very well at that. I never forgot about the work ethic that my parents taught me. So in the, in, in the late eighties or early eighties, um, my mom had been sick with multiple sclerosis and she was confined to a wheelchair. So I decided to join the family business so I can assist my father in taking care of my mother. And I'm so glad but I did because he never asked me to join the business. All he said was when I asked him if I could join the business, he said, I thought you would never ask. So that was, <laughs> that was pretty interesting. You know, it's like you can't teach tough. You either are or you're not. And mm -hmm. you can't get somebody to do something that they're not willing to do. Um, so when I joined the family business, um, I, at that time, it, it I had those work ethics built in and I was born and raised in the dry cleaning and tailoring industry. So it was music to my ear. And that's where I said to myself, well, you know, I did this as a kid. I need to take it to the next level. So in the early eighties, I took my youth and upgraded the entire dry cleaning, uh, company into um, computers and 
remodeled. And my father was like coming from the depression in World War II. What are you doing spending all this money? You know, <laughs> I was basically changing the way they did business and took it to the next generation, as you could say. I also, at that time, um, started a website even before websites were even out there well over, um, you know, 20 some years ago. So I was on the um, front line of when websites were not even um, part of the mm -hmm. house. Um, and then the, the, the company that my father owned was called Saget's Cleaners. So um, I know everybody asks, is there any direct relationship to Bob Saget, the comedian? And uh -huh. yes, there is. Um, so what happened was when my father was looking for a dry cleaning plant, he realized that there was one for sale. Her name was um, Millie Saget. And it was unfortunate that her husband had passed away and that my father had come along and he wanted to buy the business from Millie. Well, Bob Saget at that time was probably only five years old because my dad was in the business probably over 50 years. So after my father purchased the business and I joined him in the 80s, then Bob Saget became popular and that was a household name with Full House and his comedian. <laughs> Thing led to another, um, that name rang on, the Bob Saget name. So that's where the name did come on. It was Millie Saget's nephew. So it was her brother, son, Bob Saget. And till this day, um, people do still ask, is there any relationship to Bob Saget? So, um, and then once I joined my father in the dry cleaning business, I just took it to the next level, automated it with computers and everything and remodeled and then just said, okay, I'm bored. You know, we're, we're, I'm building the business up. We're doing very well. And I just kind of remembered back in the day when I was in a wedding and, I was, and my friend got married. I put on a tuxedo that we picked up last minute, nothing fit. And I said to myself, you know, someday I'm going to open up a tuxedo shop. And I'm going to make sure every tuxedo fits like a glove. And it's not rocket science because my father taught me everything I know on tailoring. So I just don't understand why certain people have certain problems. So that's when I then took it upon myself. I took a portion of the small dry cleaning business and bought a mannequin, put a tux on it. And for every dry cleaning customer that walked in, knew somebody or there was a prom or wedding coming up and the credibility that we had being their dry cleaner um, gave us the opportunity to um, take care of their son's prom or son or daughter's wedding. And, it just started off slowly but surely. And then approximately nine years ago, we sold the dry cleaning business. We made full separation and just put all of our efforts into men's formal wear uh, with opening up a second location in Phoenixville. And then in the past three years, uh, we started our custom-made suit, tuxedo, and shirt program. So it's been a roller coaster. Uh huh. I enjoyed the ride, and I'm still enjoying the ride. That's that's amazing. I I get I could see because so much of our industry is based off relationships. So I could see how you know your your for men's formal wear business grew from the dry cleaning customer base because you've built a good, you know, your family has built a good relationship with, you know, the, I guess the community or the local market. Exactly. You know, I've said from the get go, I started off, believe it or not, as an auto mechanic. 
So I used to wow. work on cars. <laughs> I, I have a little bit of background of messing with cars. Um, my first car, I, I got it when I was not making um, a, good, a good income. So everything... I wanted to save on everything. So I wanted to do, you know, change my own oil and yeah. flush the radiator, like all that stuff, change, change um, some things in the suspension that I think, you know, I'm able to do. So I, I kind of have a little bit of <laughs> knowledge. That's funny. And, you know, I, you know, right out of, I was 16 years old pumping gas and like, I, I just took it upon myself. I just was a go-getter. From there, I used to say I wanted to change somebody's flat, and then I wanted to change a fan belt, then a, a radiator hose and windshield wiper blades, and the owner of the company was like, wow. Before you know it, I was running the service station. He had three stations. I ran all three of them, and I realized that as a young kid, I can take on a lot of responsibilities and, and just take whatever I want to do and apply myself and just do it and mm -hmm. hopefully on top. And I'm very fortunate. That That's I such did. a, such a good, yeah. um, like way, especially if you're going to be an entrepreneur, it's such a good mindset to have that, you know, you, you, you could, as long as you're willing and able, you could put through, you could put in the effort and, you know, you can make it happen. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. So, so here I am. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Here I am. It's awesome. And also, can you give me a little bit of insight about company as far as like mission statement or like your 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 you know, your goals, like serving clients? Can can you give us a little bit of? So basically, um, being in the wedding prom. Um, corporate black tie events. Um, it's been an honor to deal with those people because it's the type of industry that you're celebrating something. Um, anytime you're putting on a suit, um, a tuxedo, um, you, you're, 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 you're celebrating, whether it be a marriage, a prom, a corporate event, a Christmas party, um, you know, in some cases we'll do suits for funerals. It's not a hundred percent celebration. Mm -hmm. um, having the clientele in my career is what has driven me uh, to the next level. I thrive off of my clients. Um, and I've said this for, for years, everybody wants to be reviewed. That's great. I wish there was a website that I could review my clients because that would be cool. You know, it's a good idea. They're the ones that really have given me the drive to take it to the next level, to go out of my way for them. Um, it's just rewarding. Um, I think, and I believe that if you are, good with customer service and you have great people skills that's half of your job the other half what i do for a living is just comes to me in my sleep mm -hmm. i do around the clock and then i learn new techniques and i apply them um, but just having the right people skills uh, knowing how to address your clients needs, especially during the COVID-19, I'm taking calls. And the first thing I'm more concerned about is how are you doing? Because, you know, these weddings for, they've been planning for, tw you know, two years, one year, uh -huh. years, you know, so. So let me ask you, Jim, what is your favorite part of the whole process? I know you go through certain uh, number of steps, right? From from first inquiry and then, you know, consultation. I don't know if you bring them in, they come in or like, you know, but what is your favorite part of it? Is it 
like at the end, you know, at the wedding day. I know you. You know, it, it's you know, I get a I get a kick out of the whole process. So of course, with the marketing and the website and the networking and the leads come in. Um, so the leads generate an email or a phone call. Um, we have an amazing team that's taken those calls, and they're they're just as excited for their wedding as we are when they're calling. So to get some preliminary information when they originally call, we'll set the table for us when they physically come into our location. We will have already prepared for the consultation rather than just meeting them first time and asking them questions. So we'll have a little bit of a, a so is, the, is that your favorite part when they come in and like you do the fitting or? But, you know, there's so many favorite parts because I can't wait to hear about all the industry people that they're using, where the wedding's going to be. And then I think about, I've been there. And so being in this industry, I guess the whole process is your favorite. <laughs> so much fun, so much fun. But I do get the biggest kick out of my final product. When the groom or the groomsman, it doesn't matter who, when the client puts on that suit tux, whether it be a custom made, whether it be a rental, and they look in the mirror, you feel like a million bucks. I've never felt this good in my entire life. My job is done. Yeah, such, such. That's I, rewarding. Yeah, I bet. That's such an amazing feeling for you. It is. It is. And, you know, like when they come back and they return it, our first question, we're not afraid to ask everything. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you didn't do a nice job, you probably wouldn't be asking those questions. Absolutely. So I think the, the biggest pal that I get out of what I do for a living is the final product and looking at the um, pictures after the wedding that you amazingly put together. Mm -hmm. So I can Absolutely. share on the social media platforms of, you know, her look at, in his eyes. So, you know. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to uh, getting some opinions on your expertise so i have i have like a few questions here so can you give us your opinion on how how why should a groom decide between a bow tie or a necktie i mean is there i was just so curious about that that's a great question because i've been through so many eras of fashion where um just maybe Four or five years ago, the long tie was the um, the norm. Standard, yeah. It, it it just started on the runway of you know the Golden Globes, the Grammys, the ESPYS, you name it. Whatever's on Hollywood eventually is going to come into our fashion, and the long tie is what pretty much started taking us by storm. And being in the formal wear business, I'm like, long tie? What are you kidding me? I was against it, but I had no choice but to um, run with it because this this is what the clients were asking. Now it's taken a whole turn. Mm -hmm. now, now, a crispy bow tie, um, whether it be a clip-on or a real bow tie, has now been the uh, go-to tie because I always say if you're getting married in a, um, say, um, a farm, a barn, um, you know, somewhere maybe out in Lancaster. Maybe we will do suits and long ties. We're getting married at a Center City property with a beautiful, ultra formal look. I would definitely do a bow tie. Let's keep the formality of your um, tux or suit in and up to date with the venue and how the girls are dressing. If the girls are in a T-length dress, maybe the bow tie is an overkill. Maybe you should go with, you know. So oh. it, it also has to go with what the late, the, the bridesmaids will be wearing, like the, the... Sure, like, so the series of questions I'll ask the clients when they come in prior to coming in so I can get my creative side working before they come in would be, are they... Uh, are the girls wearing to the floor? Are they off the shoulder? 
what is the formality of your wedding? You know, because the brides know exactly what formality they're looking for. If it's T length and not to the floor, I would think I didn't want to do an overkill on the groomsman or the groom. So could you take us through your creative, like you just touched on it, your creative process. So how, how does that go? Do you, do you find out what colors they like or you find out the whole style of the wedding? Right. It's a great question, uh, Ryan, because, you know, what I have done over the years, uh, which is really important is, again, prior to them coming to you, uh, if you get a lead, a phone call, um, ask a series of questions so we can get our creative side going prior to the appointment. And yes, we get walk-ins all the time, which is fine. And we'll just handle that based upon our, our store volume. So a client will call and they'll say, the girls are wearing blush dresses and it's very formal, blah, 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 this, that, the other. And like in my head, I'm saying, okay, um, I have a few ideas. What was your thoughts on the wedding fashion for um, yourself and your groomsmen or or you and your fiance making that decision? And then a lot of tools that they've worked with, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, Google, they've already seen all these combinations. So this is not something that is brand new to them. They have an idea. I want to, I would love to do Navy tuxes for them with the blush. I think that would be really nice. So um, I let them talk first and then I'll take my expertise and give them recommendations. But in the end, they'll see every option in the showroom or on a virtual tour of my website prior to coming in. So I'm not asking them to come in and waste their time. I can at least have them go to my website and I can give them a nice virtual tour weather together mm -hmm. by themselves. Awesome. So with that being said, I'm the professional, yet you have to be a listener in our industry. Oh yeah, yeah, because every, every couple has their own kind of vision and style so you just have to infuse your kind of your ideas around it right exactly right i mean after 30 years i've seen so many combinations sometimes when i'm working with people a lot of what i say is rep repetitive but that's okay because mm -hmm. the first time they're getting married they've never heard it before yeah it's the people that makes it unique it's, yeah I'm a good listener and I learn from them. I never stop learning. Yeah. So true. So so Jim, let's let's give a good quick tip for our viewers viewers here. So what I know you have a video that came out about how to tie a bow tie, right? Yes. So is there like I don't know, maybe off the cuff here we could do like a quick demo or like what are your tips? Because as a wedding photographer, I can tell you how many times we, me and the groomsmen were just like sitting there wasting time, trying to figure out, watching a YouTube video over and over and the groom sweating and like, you know, know. time is running. <laughs> I know. And, you know, Ryan, you hit it on the head because um, in my business, when I'm promoting a real bow tie over a clip on, the real bow tie looks so much more um, realistic. And there's another look after the wedding where you can have it dangling with your Yeah, cup. I love that look, yeah. And just just hanging over. Over. yeah. I love it. So when I work with clients, I give them two options. Option number one, they can hire me for a day of dressing service where I'll spend two hours with them, manage their timelines, help stage some of the pictures for the photographer like yourself, keep them in check on how to properly wear a tuxedo with the do's and the don'ts where to put your hands. But most importantly, tie their ties with ample time so you're not running behind on your 
um, you know, wedding, not to mention pinning the boutonnieres. Um, and prior to them leaving my store, I'll give them a tie to take home. And then I'm going to ask them when they come back, they're going to be tested to see if they can tie a real tie. And okay. nobody. So they get like a, a pre wedding training kind of thing. <laughs> yes, but they, they don't do their homework. And I ask them, who's tying your tie for the wedding? He said, I haven't gotten there yet. Yeah. And so, it's so, so mm, like more, much of the time they just like um, ignore, like not ignore, but they forget about it. And, you know, next thing they know, they're just like, the, you know, they don't know how to. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're men. Men go, I got it. Don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> so on my website, I have a nice. How to tie a bow tie. I made a nice video. And, uh, yeah, so we'll link it here when, when, yeah, so when this video goes out, we'll link the video here. So, that'll be fine. Mm -hmm. More than happy to share, but some people can follow my video. Some people follow better in other videos. Um, it's not one and done, it's practice. Yeah, absolutely. So, and especially pinning those boutonnieres too. I mean, that's, that's so helpful because if they, you just leave it to them, most of the time, like they have no idea. They never like, you know, handled it's near before. Most of the groomsmen, it's their first time being a, a groomsman. And before they get to the ceremony, it's already like it fell off somewhere because the pinning wasn't secure. Right. You know, and the images that or the images that you're capturing, um, it's crooked. Yeah, it's not placed correctly. So, you know, you can't straighten that out. Sometimes those so, little details make a lot, you know, make well, a lot of difference. Attention to detail. I even tell them if you're very nervous about the ties, then you can call the hotel or location of your choice to see if they do have somebody at the property that you can designate to do that works for the property. Yeah. I've, I know I've trained a few hotel staff members. <laughs> that's reason. awesome. So what about for, for neckties? So what, what's your tips for, you know, tying the neckties? Is it, do you have like a recommended, you know, there's knots like full Windsor, Windsor. There's right. Or, well, and that's a good question because I have a full Windsor right here. A lot of my clients do a half Windsor. Um, when I'm doing wedding parties with the real long tie, I'll ask the groom if he would like me to pre-tie them all so there's consistency, so you don't have one groomsman in a half Windsor, one in a full, and then all your images, you're going to see them a little not as accurate. Mm -hmm. But um, again, with our tools, with Google, Google's my best friend. You know, <laughs> I learn off of Google every day. Yeah. Know. But it saves so much time if they, they have you on, on there on the wedding day. It's just, I know. so the guys can just, you know, talk, chat, sports, whatever, you know, have a beer, relax before everything, you know. It's all preparation, Ryan. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you're on prepared then it's going to show right <laughs> yeah all right so on on the next question that i have for you so what do you see on this coming what this coming season it might be late this season or maybe next year so what do you see like trends or upcoming things in terms of men's fashion, like formal wear for occasions, are like skinny ties still in or whatever? Like, I don't know. What's the scoop? <laughs> well, what's really nice about fashion today, and I've been watching this over my 35 year career, um, how more and more men are very, very concerned on how they look on their wedding day than maybe 10 years ago. They're paying a little more attention to detail on going on different uh, 
uh, Pinterest and just looking at different looks and can this be done, whether it be rental or custom made, they have ideas in their mind and I'll take their ideas and I'll turn it into a reality. So example, um, I've had clients that have texted me some pictures and I'd say, we don't have that in rental, but I'll be more than happy to make that for you. And getting back to your original question, what's the big charge that I get out of what I do is having that finished product where he didn't think was ever going to happen for his wedding. And it was custom made just for him. And I was able to fully execute that. And the rest of the wedding party, they rented. So there wasn't a big expense through this entire wedding party. So the groomsmen had their normal custom fitted rentals and the groom had exactly what he dreamed of and more because we took the time to give them more education and more uh, options, you know, which, uh -huh. you know, so fashion and um, men are um, a good connection these days. They're very um, right down to the ankle and the taper of how they want it on their ankle with the no sock, loafer, everything, right down to the pocket square. Awesome. So, yeah, and so lesson is consult with your stylist, like Jim, like your men's formal wear stylist. Yeah, and also with, with, with what you've said, right? So men nowadays, it's... it's the fashion is more um, getting, you know, getting sophisticated, like, and evolving in, in, in a good way, right? Yeah, so um, most of my clients come in and they've seen my pictures through my galleries on my websites, or they were at a wedding and they saw the client, whether it was a rental or a custom, and they know how they looked. Again, it's my job to dress these men for the person behind the lens that's gonna capture all those images to make them look a certain way with the white showing through their cuffs with the proper length of the pants, not baggy in the leg, not baggy in the sleeve or the body. And that's the last picture the bride and groom are gonna see. So it's my job to fully execute a perfect fitting to capture those images from your lens to keep those memories down the road, not to mention it's a visual for the wedding party, not to mention the guests and people will come and say, I was at so-and-so's wedding and I just love the way his suit or tuxedo looked on him and can we do that that's their biggest fear that it's going to be too baggy and my fear it's going to be too tight <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be too baggy i'll tell them that i i want to make sure that it's not too tight you know awesome so you know, and these suits, these suits right when they own it they could also use it for like galas and you know it's not just you know, for, for a, a wedding day, they could use it for, for corporate events, right? Exactly. So when I'm designing, let's just give an example, a, a nice navy blue suit for the wedding. We might add a little of attention to detail and do a little um, different thread color on the buttonhole. We might do a different thread color on the lapel buttonhole. We'll do some monogramming on the inside. We'll put the wedding date. Um, we'll ask them not to wear it until the wedding. And then you will have that blue suit for down the road. There's some linings now where this is a surprise for the bride. She doesn't see it coming. The groom will send me up to 10 pictures of whether it be engagement photos or um, just them growing up together. And I'll have a lining made out of those photos to 
put inside the jacket and then they'll have, he'll do a reveal at some point in time and just watching the expression on both of their faces is rewarding. Yeah, that's, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah I'm always, I'm always um, impressed when I see those, the customized stuff. Yeah. So, Jim, so let's give our, our grooms here a little, a few tips, um, if you may. So, could you, can you give grooms, it doesn't have to be super specific, but general tips on um, picking their suit. So, like, what to look for. I mean, you touched on a little bit of it, like, you know, you can't it do, try, try, avoid it being too baggy or, you know, can you touch on like a cu quick few tips? Right. Being a custom tailor, uh, most of my um, clients have had the luxury of going and buying a suit somewhere, whether it be a department store, whether it be a chain, a private store, boutique. And, you know, um, a lot of times they just assume that's the way it's supposed to fit. They're not tailors. I'm a tailor. So I'll ask clients when I see them come in and I'm working with them for their wedding, I'll see what they're wearing and I'll judge them on what they're wearing. And I might say to them, are you comfortable in what you're wearing? Most of the time they'll say, no, I want it tighter. I can't get it to fit a certain way. So I'll put on some samples in my store and then they'll say, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So I think the best tip that I have for all of my clients when it comes to fit, if you want it tighter, it can be tighter. You just have to find the right tailor, whether it be an alteration or go and purchase the proper suit or do your research prior to just mm -hmm. spending money on whether it be a suit, a tux, um, a sport jacket, a yeah. pair of Because I know there's like things about like on the shoulders and you know, that, that, if if you kind of um, not consider like the correct way of of um, you know of fitting, it's gonna look so it's gonna look off, and you're not gonna feel comfortable. Right. Right. So you know, all of my suits I like to do with a soft shoulder because most of my clients want to see that where the arm meets the shoulder. That's exactly where the end of my jacket's gonna come. We don't want it to protrude over, then it's going to look a little boxy and not, yeah. as, not as trim. Like you're still wearing a hanger behind you. <laughs> right. And there are certain clients that have like a rounded shoulder. So you, as a tailor, you have to have an eye for the person that's coming in. They may tell you. Yeah, what, the physical composition, right? Exactly. They might tell you what they're interested in, but I, as a tailor, would suggest something that would fit them better based on the cut. But awesome. in, 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 at the very, very end, um, unless they're happy. And I'll do everything in my power to make them happy because it's my job. That's, that's what I came here to do. Perfect. And I believe... That's, that's just my opinion that every, every guy out there needs to own at least one pair of a good fitting suit. I mean, like, you know, for any, even though you might not be wearing, you might not be working in a corporate world, but at least you got right. at least one, you know, good fit, a pair of good fitting suit. So, so when, when the occasion like comes, like a formal, like you're, you're yeah. ready. Yeah. Yep. And you know, it's a, it's a good point, Ryan, because when I'm working with my custom clients um, or I sell suits too, it could be a retail. It doesn't have to be custom. Um, I ask them questions. Um, how many suits do you have? What are your, what's your color palette? And then I give them a little bit of an education um, saying, okay, great. You have a black, you have a gray. Are you light gray? Is that just for the summer? Or are you medium gray? Is it, four seasons. 
How about your blue? Is it light, dark, you know, middle? And then I remind them once we do, whether it's a customer or retail, I remind them that you just got yourself an extra pair of pants in your wardrobe, an extra sport jacket in your wardrobe, not to mention you can wear that sport jacket with jeans. So, you know, everything is interchangeable. And most people will put that suit in the closet and not wear the jacket unless they're wearing the jacket and the pants together. So it's important to take your wardrobe and utilize it with other outfits in your closet. And I make it a point that they realize that. Okay. I got, I got a good question for you. So if I was somebody that has, I don't own any, any suit, right? And I'm just starting out. So what, what color would you recommend as like, it's just, just in general, does it, I, I doesn't have to be just for like, uh, uh, for men in general, what color is, should be the first suit that they should own? Is it like, you know, black, blue? So uh, a lot has to do with, um, what's trending. Um, and, um, I'm very partial to blue right now. And, not only in my retail collection and my rental and my custom collection, we have so many different shades of blue. The first thing I would do is I would look at their um, skin tone. And then I would show them those colors on them. Everything is visual in everything we do with fashion. Clients will not come into the store and just assume they like that particular look on the mannequin. We have to physically put it on them. I want to see how the color is bouncing off their skin. And we don't do it with an undershirt. We do it with, you know, like a, a white shirt or if we have a colored shirt. It, it's like reality. We have to just kind of see it with reality. Mm -hmm. so, so you think blue is the most neutral color that, like, if somebody was going to buy their first pair of suit, that they could do oh, definitely. like multi-purpose, right? Absolutely, it's four seasons. Uh, if you do too light, then you're putting yourself more into the spring and summer. But if you do something in a cobalt to navy blue, you can definitely get a four seasons. And gray, gray as well. A medium to dark, but not charcoal is a good four season suit. Um, I have some clients that are, um, they're not on board with blue and the brown shoe <laughs> belt. They're they're not on board. <laughs> yeah, still goes to your you know the person's preference. But as a general tip, I guess uh, your you know opinion. So blue is is a good color of absolutely. Tool. All right. Well, that's the, new, that's the new black, Ryan. Absolutely. That's why I'm wearing blue. <laughs> How about that? I didn't even. You know, it's all right. You, it look good. you look good. Thank you. Well, that's just from from following Jim and taking tips from him. You know that you, you know where where I get my my fashion oh. kind of style from. That's, that's good. I <laughs> all admire right. you and how you dress and your work. Uh, thank you so much. You're welcome. I do the same. Uh, that's why um, I did this series of interviews because every entrepreneur that, you know, in, in my local area that really inspires me, I, I really want to, you know, get, get a casual chat and, you know, kind of dissect their, you know, their way of thinking and mm -hmm. you know, learn more about their business. So, I guess we'll end with this last question. It's a very important one. So, Jim, what's your favorite drink of choice? Oh, I love Crown Royal Manhattans. There you go. Awesome. And that's like, you know, it, it could be a winter drink, and sometimes I'll have a, a summer drink uh, of martinis, but... Um, I'm still winter uh, drink mode. <laughs> Crown Royal Manhattan. There you have it. All right. Well, 
before we end, could you tell us something, uh, things that are coming up for Saget's uh, formal wear? If, if you have anything you want to let the viewers know? So basically, I, I've retooled our company uh, between the two locations. Um, as you know, um, non-essential businesses cannot go into the brick and mortar and conduct what we do every day. Um, but that didn't keep me from finding ways to um, continue to talk to engaged couples that are getting married in the fall of 2020, not to mention mm -hmm. first 2021. And they're very upset that they can't plan their wedding. And they're afraid that once we get back to work, we're going to be so busy with our fourth quarter that we can't work with them comfortably in our first quarter of 2021. So that's where I spent a lot of time with my web developer and uh, with my website at sagots.com. Now they're virtually able to view um, my tuxedo collection, including my custom wear. And I'm jumping on a lot of Zoom calls for consultations. I even took it to another level where uh, I am measuring them from home. It's a printable tape measure. So they'll print it out. I'll shoot them the email. And then we get on a Zoom call. And the fiance is measuring her husband to be. <laughs> And that's like a fun process. It is. And I'm telling them exactly what to do. Once I get those measurements, I'm writing them down as she's doing it. Then I, they tell me what they like for their wedding. They're looking virtual platform and they can call me back and say, these are the, this is the blue that I like. And then I'm, mailing them a groom preview in their size and their accessories right to their front door. So it's virtually, they're picking their suit online for rental or tux. I'm walking them through the measurement process and then sending it right to their door with a return prepaid postage for them to send it back to me so they can at least get some comfort knowing that they got the process started and I was there for them. So that's my, that's what, that's new. <laughs> that's awesome. That's so cool. I guess yeah. everyone can also check your website because you, you said you did some updates, right? Yes. Yes. And they could sign up for um, any type of news, trends, special events, right, right online as well. All right. Also, could you tell our viewers how to find you on social media? What's the social media handles for the company? Yeah. So um, at Facebook, you just type in Saget's Formal Wear. Um, and for Instagram, at Saget's Formal Wear. And I'm constantly updating images for my clients to see my um, current and past work especially on Instagram, because that seems to be a uh, very big um, marketing tool for me for um, uh, uh, just for the eyes. And I don't talk much. I just show pictures and, you know, the picture is worth a thousand words. Absolutely. So I'm enjoying the technology. Yeah, and your website is, again, could you? Sagits.com. Sagits.com. All right, there you have it. All right, well, it's been, it's been a great interview, and we covered a lot of things, especially for tips for grooms. I hope you guys, you know, um, got something out of this um, interview. We, we covered a lot of great stuff. Thank you so much, Jim, for coming in for the interview. Ryan, thank you for having me. It's nice to work with our industry professional like yourself and, uh, and just kind of like guide everybody along the way because we're all in this together and our job is to be team bride, team groom. Awesome. So guys, don't forget to hit the like button, share, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and 
thank you so much again, Jim, for being in our small business shout outs where I feature amazing entrepreneurs in our local community where we just talk chat, talk business and everything in between. So we'll see you guys. On, yeah. Thanks, Jim. And then we'll see you guys on the next episode of small business shout outs. It's Ryan here again of Ryan at a photography. Take care, stay safe, be well. See you guys soon.